Hello, welcome back to this week's tutorial for our Pico 8 project. Um, today, what we're going to look at is adding in uh, pickups, like coins or power-ups or something uh, into the game. But um, really what we're going to be doing is laying sort of the basics that are going to allow you to add a lot of other things to the game, like bullets uh, the player may shoot or enemies. Um, so... This one is kind of like the simple version. Um, pickups are the easiest version because they don't have any additional logic behind them. Um, the player just walks over and they collect the item and that's it. Um, but everything else uh, will build off of this. So let me load up where we left off. Looks like we were on four. And let me just real quick save this as 05. And where we were at, um, we finished off with doing some jumping mechanics um, and, and side scrolling. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add, um, let's just make it like a coin. Uh, let me grab a sprite I haven't used. Um, this one right here. And I'll real quickly, let's sketch out a coin. Looks good to me. Again, art's not my strong suit. Um, but, you know, I try. All right, you know what? Let me just, um, now that does kind of look like. Not the best coin, um, but it's my coin, and it will do. Okay, so let's say I want to put some coins on my map. The map. Um, let's put like a coin here and a coin here, right? Let's put two coins on. Well, <clears throat> we can't just click here and draw the coin because it's erasing the background tile. Um, so that's there's other game engines in mapping that allow you to have layers and then we could put them on a layer and work with it that way. Uh, but it's good that Pico 8 doesn't let us do that because uh, I think doing this by hand will give us a um, better understanding of the system we need to build that we can use for other systems later on this pickup. So right now, let's see. I want to put one at 11 and 7. And I want to put one at 15 and 8. So I'm just going to get a notepad up real quick here. Um, I'm going to... 11 and 8, I think, is what I said. Um, can I make that bigger? Let's, let's just do this font. So that y'all can see this too. So I said 11 and 8, no, it's 11 and 7. 11 and 7, and then another one here. That's X15 and Y8. Right? You can do this too. You can go through and like where you want your different power-ups and pickups to be on the map um, and how you want them uh, shown. Let's jump back into the code. Um, and I'm going to start doing this. Um, here in a new tab so we just kind of don't interfere with anything um this pickups can kind of be their own system function init pickups right uh, i don't need to take any here and then i'm gonna have a function update pickups And last, we'll have a function to draw our pickups on the screen. <clears throat> and there we go. And then, let's do what I call wiring this up. So we need to init them here. So, Pico8 is going to call the init function 
we need it to call our init. Just because we name this init and update and draw doesn't, it started with those names, doesn't mean anything special. Only these mean something special that um, Pico8 will automatically call those. Update the pickups. And last, we will draw pickups. I'm going to run that, make sure I didn't break any code. Didn't do anything yet. I just want to make sure we didn't break anything. Okay. All right, so. What we're going to do is we need to start keeping a list. Sometimes it'll be referred to as a list. Sometimes you might hear array. Um, in Pico's Lua language, um, sort of tables and um, you might hear these called hashes or dictionaries and lists are all kind of the same. So this, this can change if you go to different languages, um, but the details of the change are, are not big. Um, it'll just be the way that you type them in. The most important thing is the concept themselves. Um, so you, you have, um, there's stuff you can get into down here. We're not going to get into some of the advanced things you can do, which is cool, but not our focus today. We're just really caring about these right here. So you have an add function. You can add things to your list. Um, you can get everything in the list with all. You can count up how many things, how many things do I have in the list. You can delete an item from the list, which is really good. And <clears throat> then there's two other more special case use ones. Um, what you can use uh, for each calls a given function for every element. So it goes through with every pickup you have, it'll run this function on it. Um, and then Last, we have pairs, um, which is sort of like going over the all, but instead of uh, just getting the values, you get the key as well. Um, so what is what is key being? Well, let's take a look over here in code. All right. So I'm going to make our uh, PUB our pickups. And you, and you start this off by just doing an empty uh, pair of braces like that. And that just lets, um, just like we did with the player, that just lets it know that we're going to store things, right? So you see in the player here, like I have px and p.y and everything like that. And, and, and we can do that here as well. We can do, you know, p.x equals zero. Um, you can also treat this a little differently. You can say pick up x equals zero as a string. And this string in here is called the key. Sometimes you can do this as a number, right? So, um, so you pick up one is uh, equals zero, and then pick up two equals one, you know, or 31, whatever you need it to be. So this side here is the value, is the V in these that they're showing. And this part over here is the key, right, is the K that they're showing here. Um, so you can think of over here like this x being the key, the y being the key, and 60 being the value. Um, Lua allows you to be really loose and use the same thing in different ways a lot of times. Um, other languages will be a little bit more strict sometimes. Um, so what we want to do is we want to say we have a pickup at 17, 7, and 15, 8. And we need to know what the sprite is, right? If I come over here, it is sprite 17. So let's make a note down here. This is 17 is the sprite number. Okay. So 17 is our sprite, and we want one on map tile 11, 7, and 15, 8. So the first thing we're going to do is add to our list of pickups. So if I get this out of the way here, you can real quick see the add function. Um, adds value to T. So T is pickup. 
and we're going to add a value here. Now this value, we can get fancy with it, and we can put it in double braces, and we can go, the sprite is 17, the x is 11, and the y is 7. And then, I'm just going to copy this, because again we're going to have sprite 17, 15, and 8, right? So now what we have here um, is, if I just go ahead and run this, I'm going to hit escape and I'll do a print PU. It tells me it's a table. Okay. Well, what's the count of the table? Oh, there's two elements. So now I could do, you know, you know it might help if I put a screen for you. Um, so there's two elements in our pickup array. And one thing I could do right here is I could do bracket one. What's the first one? It's also a table. Now, if you remember, we, we set that to be dot S. We set it to be S, X, and Y. So we can actually do dot S. We could do bracket. Quote S, right? It's the same thing, right? This is what I was showing you on the player uh, here, is that this dot s and this string s, pico8 and lua, allow you to be a little free in how you address that. You could even, well, we don't have a one. Um, I'll, I'll take that back. I thought we could get away with being really, really creative, but we can't. But we, we know we have um, a dot s a dot x and a dot y and we also have that for pickup two so we have two pickups and we have some data with them um nothing's going on in the game with it yet though I haven't done anything we're just building a little list of pickups and putting it in here so let's let's do something with them and by doing something i mean drawing them on the screen and for that, we got our values entered, so I could just get rid of this. No, don't take that. I'm going to use the all method. And it says right here it's used in for v and all t. Okay, this is, this is my kind of preferred method. I think it's the easiest to read, but there's obviously other ways to do this. So for, I'm going to say p for each pickup, in all pu. So PU is the list of all pickups. P is going to get each one of these individually. Okay. Do and end. Okay. That's the way a for loop looks like. For P in all pickups, do the following. And if you remember, SPR draws our sprite on the screen. So now. The first time we go through this loop, P is going to be the same thing as um, what I showed you earlier, pick up one, right? So this is what's going to happen. The game, I can take this out here. Yeah. When Pico 8's running, this line up here means set P equal to pick up one for us and do the following. And then the next time, Set it to two and do the following, right? And then we're going to loop through each one of these. And once you've done all of them, we're going to end our loop. Now, I put in p.x and p.y. This isn't going to work. Uh, they're going to be up there stacked on each other. Uh, but you can see we went through the loop. And, of course, the reason we're stacked on each other is I didn't write up here the pixel coordinates of the map. I wrote the tile coordinates. So again, there are eight pixels per tile. So if we just multiply by eight, we now have our pickups where we want them. Although they are not joined into the camera. So what we need to do before we do anything here is we will set our camera. 
And I believe we called it C. But I'll go look here in a second. On our map function, ah, we did CX and CY. Okay. So we just need to go ahead and say these pickups are camera dependent. And set it back when we're done. Because we don't know if the next function is going to need that. And then now they should not scroll and they'll stay in place. <clears throat> okay. So, quick review. We created pickups. We added to the list two pickups. We can add as many as we want here. And then down here, we go over the list and we draw them out one by one. The player can move through them, however. Right? So we need to do some collision. So essentially, what is our collision going to be? Well, once again, the player we can think of as a square. And we can think of our pickup as a square. So we have two boxes. Actually, three. We need to know, does the player touch this pickup? Does the player touch that pickup? And if they do, then we'll handle, we'll give the player the coin, right? We could do this because we know the tile. Okay? So... We could try to use our um, map code and, and modify our map collide function. Um, but that's really particular to the way maps work. And it's really particular to setting these um, flags as to whether or not something is a collision um, tile. So we're going to go with something here. Um, and I'm going to put it on its own tab so we can just reuse it just be kind of like a generic function over here and i'm gonna call this um a a b b collide all right before i fill this out let's break down what i'm talking about with a a b b because if you come into google and you type in a a b b collision right type in a a b b collision you're going to get a ton of hits um, on this. This is a very standard method of video game collision detection. And right up here, there's these developer developer.mozilla.org techniques for game development articles come right up. Um, you can hit the 2D collision. And then you see that AABB stands for Axis Align Bounding Box. What does that mean? Well, if you imagine here we have a grid okay the first part is axis aligned means that our square that we're going to check okay is not rotated its sides line up parallel to the graph to the grid okay so they're not rotated um and then the last part is bounding box bounding box means there is something in the middle of these. You know, it's kind of hard to see, but that's what I'm going to use. There is something in the middle, but we're just kind of boxing it off as a rough approximation. And we're going to use the boxes. There are other ways of doing this, uh, but this is one of the easiest ways to get started. So, once again, your squares have to be axis aligned. And your objects that you're testing, right? The, the things you're testing cannot be rotated. And they have to be boxed off and represented. Um, in a box. So that said, this is really all the code. This this code shows not only does this code show you how to do it, it's a complete example of doing it. And they even give you down here. Uh, you can move this with the arrow keys. Um, and when it's green, you're colliding, and when it's blue, you're not. So they give you a little demo. Now this is in JavaScript, so we'll have to change this over to Lua. Uh, but it's not so different um, that it will pose any problems.
So let I'm zooming in here to make it big enough for you guys to read. And we'll just go ahead and get that over here. So what are we gonna need to pass in? Um well we're gonna need an X1, a Y1, a width one, and a height one. That's say our player. And then an X2, a Y2, a W2, and a height two, H2. And that's gonna be our Make that look nice for me. Uh, that's going to be, let's say, our coin. Okay. So down here, I'll put return false. All right, because if you look at it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to code this big test, and if that's all true, then we have a collision detected. All right. If not, we'll return false. So. I'm gonna grab this now. I'm gonna paste that right in here. Okay. So let's start changing this code over to Lua. Um, first of all, if we don't we don't use these braces um, in Lua, we use an end instead. Uh, so let's change that end here. Um, it went off a little bit. That's okay. Let me get over here and take that brace away there. Uh, also, not using these parentheses in Lua. There is a version of if you can use parentheses, but we're not using that one. Uh, this bit right here is where we will return true. All right? So, if rectangle 1 hits rectangle 2 um, through three steps, um, and I'll walk through all of this here in a second. Um, <clears throat> if, they, if they collide in any of these steps, um, then we will return true. Otherwise, we're going to return false. Okay. All right. Let's start changing this over. So, rect one, I've actually made x one and w one. So we're just going to take those out. And anywhere it says rect one, it's going to make this x one. Nice thing about this site is they kind of organize things pretty well, so it makes this kind of substitution easier. Okay, so now we have a height one, so that's h1. Um, we have a width one, that's w1. All right, now let's do all of our twos. That's x2, that's width two. Whoops, that's rect two. I'm sorry, that's x2. And down here, these are our Y twos and the height two, and lastly a Y two. And now um, the greater than and the plus work in Lua, but the double ampersand here um, in many languages means and. And in Lua, you just type out the word and. Now I'm gonna make these line up. So in Lua, this actually the way we brought this in shortens this up quite a bit, <clears throat> just in the way that we brought that in. So what is this saying? Okay. Let me uh get my cursor over here before I do that. Alright, so we got this box here, right? And we got a box. The green box is one, and the red box is two. So the first thing that we check are the x's, okay? So x1 is x1 less than x2 plus the width of two. Well, it is, so we're good there, right? Now, x1 this is x2, but we add x2's width. So we make sure this point is less than that point. That's good. And then we do kind of the inverse. 
We check the insides. Then we check the outsides. Now we check the insides. X1 plus width 1, so now we're checking this, is greater than X2. That's this point right here. So right now, we'll look at this again. X1, X1. This value is greater than X2. Yeah, it is, actually. Okay, and <clears throat> they're y1 less than, okay, so, so y1 is, is up here at our top, is less than, which in, in video game code, it means above, is less than y2 plus the height to, okay? And then lastly, is our y1 plus our height one, y1 plus the height one, greater than our y2, okay? That's how it works. So it kind of just runs that loop and checks each one of those. And if any of those fail, then we have a collision. If they all pass, then we're fine and we have no collision. So how do we check this out? Well, remember, first of all, on our map collide function, we have to add CX and CY um, to the player to adjust for the camera. So remember we have to do that. So let's come over here. When we update our pickups, let's check for a collision. And we're gonna have a px equals the players dot x plus the camera x and the player y will equal the players dot y plus c c y. <clears throat> Right? And we're doing that because we did that here where we took the X and the Y in and we adjusted them. So I'm not going to adjust them on the AABB collide function. I'm going to leave this kind of clean of having to worry about any map data. And we'll adjust map data numbers going in. Whereas in the map function, because we always knew it was going to be compared against the map with the player, um, we could do that kind of uh, collision. All right, and let's just check PL.X and PL.Y are the values of the players X and Y, so that's good. Okay, now we're going to do our four again for all pickups. Type in my end. We'll take our function here and we'll say if What did I call it? AABB collide. If AABB collides, then th th there's a nice thing here uh, about Lua is it gives us the delete method. Other languages will make this a little bit more tricky. In other languages, you're not allowed to change the list while you're going over the list a lot of times. You have to do it separately. Um, so you'll have to like remember which one to mess with or create flags and keep up with that. But Lua actually says we can do this. Lua actually says we can just delete um, pickups. We can just delete like that. So we're going to loop over all of them. If they collide, and yes, I haven't finished, filled that in yet. I'm going to do that here in a second. <clears throat> then uh, we can go ahead and delete that value. All right. So what goes in the middle? Well, our player does, right? So our PX and our PY. Um, did we put the player's width and height in? Yes, we did. Do we call they are eight by eight? They are eight by eight. They take up a full tile. But we did p make a PL.W and a PL.H. 
width. So there we go. Those S are X1, our Y1, our W1, and our H1. And the other is going to be our P.X. Again, we have to multiply by 8 because it's in tiles, not pixels. And our P.Y. Again, we multiply by 8. And now we need a height and a width. Um, but let's go look at our tile real quick and see how we did this. Well, our height, we can do our height easy, right? Our height is 8. We went from top to bottom. So let's skip width for a second and let's just go 8. <clears throat> because we know that's um, going to be the height. Let me just put then right here like that. Help, help that <clears throat> be a little bit more legible. So what's our width? Well, the width is 6. No problem right there. Except, where does it start? So if we just said the width is 6, it would be counting off 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then this whole line right here would get ignored. So what we need to do is offset this from where it actually starts, right? We need it to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And offset this by adding 1 to where we start. That's easy enough. Take the x value and add 1. That should. I didn't type anything is wrong. I left out the then. I had all my ands, but I left out the then. Once again, since we got a multiple line if statement, I'll put the then here so it's easier to see. This is the test. This is what we do. And this is the end of the block. <clears throat> all right. Did everything work the first time for me? It did? It did. And that is kind of the basics right there of doing the pickups. Just to round this video out a little bit, <clears throat> we will come over here and we will say pl.score equals zero. And then we'll come to our pickups. And before we delete it, actually it doesn't matter, we could delete it first, but We'll say the score plus equals 100. So we'll give them 100 points every time they pick up uh, a um, coin. And then in our main draw function, we got our draw pickups. We'll make this draw. Oops, sorry. UI, right? We'll draw like the user interface on top of everything. And let's go. Um, we'll put it in the map tab. We don't have much going on here. We can put it the map tab. Function draw UI. It stands for user interface. And let's just do a print score space. And if I remember right, it's a it's a period. Yes, no, it's two periods. Um, and we'll put that. Let's go over. Let's see what uh, one hundred and fifteen looks like. On the X um, will be zero on the Y, and then the last one for the print, I believe, is the color. So let's get the green. Which one's green? Uh, green is color eleven. 
And I believe off the top of my head that is the print function. But I can always come over here and go to strings. Um, and... Special characters. Oh, it didn't. Maybe it's in graphics. Print, yes. Print the string. X and the line, the color. Yeah, okay, there we go. Oh, that's not far. That's too far over, isn't it? Let's bring it back some. Um, and since it's on the light blue, let's go with the dark green. Which is three. Let's take this back by ten pixels. Oh, not enough. Let's take this down to 95, another 10 pixels. There we go. Probably not enough. We got the 100 going off. Let's, let's bring it down like it's hitting the top. So let's go down to 2 and let's go back to 90. We could do some math to figure out um, where exactly we, we want uh, things showing up at on the screen. That's not really the point on this one. Uh, the point on this one is just to show that it's working. So what's color is white? Seven. That might be a better color. So there you go. Recapping. What we added in is the AABB collide function. Which again, if you just search for AABB Collision, you know, you can find this uh, Mozilla developer site that goes into detail. Uh, this and other types of 2D collision. Like I said, that was not the only one. And we also covered, uh, to make our pickup system, uh, we talked a little bit about Pico 8's tables, which you can call lists sometimes. Or think of them as arrays or lists of things. At least that's the way we're using them. Uh, so we made a list of pickups here in the beginning, um, and and these can be very detailed things. They don't have to be just a simple list of numbers. They can have values with them. Um, and then we can use the for all, for value in all list, and do a whole bunch of things with them in the list and go over each one, including delete them if we need to. And then last, we covered... Once again, just drawing things on the screen um, and wiring everything up and then did a little bit of a bonus with drawing some UI on the screen. So let me just save that. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching.